Hello everybody. So today I am going to be drawing and painting this peacock for you. So I'm just going to press record on my camera as well. Okie doke. So this peacock is absolutely gorgeous and I saw this picture and I thought, oh, I've got to try and do that. So we're going to start, it's actually, I can see a little bit of his back feathers. So we're going to try and paint those in as well, but I'm going to get the drawing done first. So I start, I always start drawings of animals at the front of the, the head. So his head length is just about the same length as his beak. So his beak needs to come to there. Like that. <clears throat> so, and he's got a slightly curved beak. That's quite a thick beak. So observing is all part of practice um, and I suggest you know lots and lots and lots of practice is good um, I draw pretty much every single day and just a little bit even a little bit is good because um, you do learn to see more things the more you look the more you see and the more you practice the more you learn to see so he's got a white marking that comes up over his eye so I'll pop that on just and I can change anything anything I'm not happy with I can change as I go um, his eye is about halfway back through his head so if his head's that wide I'd mark about there his eye will be about there and it's up near that white mark and it's oval shaped so I pop his oval shaped eye and quite a large eye peacock so they've got lovely eyes so I do that and I just I, the color of this one just got me I thought he's just magnificent so I needed to paint him so pop his eye there I need to make his head a fraction taller just a fraction and he's got a beautiful crest on the back of his head with little fan shaped um, little fan shaped uh, where's my peacock picture my peacock picture doesn't want to work there we go I'm just gonna flip my camera there we go not my camera my um there we go so he's got little fan shaped hello Madonna how are you I'm very well, thank you. How have you been, Dal? Thought I would paint this peacock for you guys today. And he's got about, oh, I don't know, I can't see, he's got about 20 of these little cresty things on his head. I'm just going to drop that down a bit so you can see it. Peacocks are amazing. They are gorgeous. Our neighbours have got them and they're just magnificent. Absolutely magnificent. And they, But they're thunder on the roof. <laughs> They jump on the roof and make all kinds of noises. <clears throat> but they're fun to draw too because they're magnificent colours. And this is a beautiful royal blue peacock. He's just gorgeous. So I thought I'm going to have a go at this. I, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to mix the colours because they're almost iridescent. Doing great, thanks. Excellent. Glad to hear. Glad to hear, Dal. Me too. The world is happy at the moment. Um, okay, so his head, his neck, his chin goes down on an angle. I'm actually going to put the highlight, I'm going to draw the highlight. I don't use masking fluid. I try to leave the paper, the white of the paper. And I'm using Archer's Hot Press paper. Now his neck is, if I measure his head and his beak, is two times the length of his head and his beak. So his neck ends there. So I always measure the proportions against another part of the body. I usually use the head as the first measurement. So whatever size I do the head, that's what I measure everything else against. So his head, because I love to draw freehand, I don't like to, I like to practice my drawing skills. So, and he's actually, he comes down, his head, his neck gets thicker at the bottom and then goes off and he's sort of, he's back to us. So I can see the top of his wing, which comes to about the base of his neck and then goes off there. So he sort of disappears off there like that. Okie doke. Now he's got his nose I've done in there. I'm just having a quick look at his beak to see if there's any details I need to mark out, see if there's anything that I've missed. He's got lots of tiny little feathers. And one of the mistakes, I, one, one of the things I want to do I want to not just have straight lines. I want to have little, because I leave my pencil work in. 
and animals don't have straight lines. So now that I've drawn him in, I'm just going to wiggle his lines a little bit just so that he doesn't look, when I, when I paint him, he doesn't have flat edges because birds don't have flat edges. <laughs> and that's one of the things I've learned just recently is that I need to loosen up his lines. Not I've drawn him where I want them, but now I can go like this and soften up his lines so he doesn't just look like he's got a hard straight line for an edge when he's finished. Just like that. Um, I've started back at art classes in our town. There's um, a little art shop and we are very lucky to have an amazing art instructor. And he's like, Jen, have lost and found lines. I'm like, okay, we'll do that. <laughs> do what I'm told. I have lost and found lines. And it does make a picture look better. So I'm going to, so if you just disappear some of the edges, you don't end up with hard lines like that. And his wings have got, I, what, another thing I loved about this is his wings. He has the most amazing brown and white pattern on his wings. So I am going to try and draw those in. And again, see how I've done hard lines? I need to soften up those lines a little bit. I can just like suggest where they're going to be, but don't do them completely solid. So that's the plan. It's not to do them completely solid. So how does my sound sound, guys? Because I've got new headphones today. I've got my new wireless headphones specifically for this. So I'm hoping they sound okay. And it's just, looking closely, they're just sort of just oval shaped, rough oval shapes all the way around. Oh, wow, sounds like fun. I love learning. Oh, me too. I've, oh, he's the most amazing art instructor and he's a beautiful wildlife artist and fascinated with anatomy and the zoology and he does like wildlife uh, uh, preservation and all that kind of stuff. So he's a fascinating teacher, like absolutely passionate about animals of all kinds. He specialises in birds, but he does everything. Um, if you look on Instagram, his name is William Ritchie, W-I-L-L-I-A-M. Uh, R-I-T-C-H-I-E. He's an amazing, amazing, award-winning Australian artist. Um, and I'm lucky enough that he lives in my, roughly, in my area. So I get to go to classes with him. So, and learn a lot about anatomy, about behaviours. Sound is nice and clear. Excellent. Glad to hear. Glad to hear. Good, good. I was a bit worried because I, I set him up this morning on the on the, the website, on the, what do you call it? On Streamlabs, which is what I stream through. And, um, cause I hadn't heard them back. And see how I've got the tops of his feathery bits, these bits, I've made them flat. They're not flat, they're tiny little feathery ends. So I'm, instead of having a flat line, now I'm gonna change them to a little fan shape like that. But yeah, I'll put, I'll put a link to Will's, um, Instagram below because you want to see an amazing wildlife artist. Wow, this dude is good. Um, okay, great. Thank you. I'll look him up. Awesome. Yeah, I'll pop a link in below too after the stream because he is an amazing, amazing, amazing artist. I don't know whether he does online classes. He might. He might do online classes. I'm not sure. But um, okay, so that's just about. So I've, I've loosened up. I drew him flat lines first, like straight lines, and now I've broken the lines so they look soft and fluffy, and he doesn't look like a hard-lined bird. And I've got to get rid of that line. I've marked in all the, well, not all, but I've marked in most of the feathery bits on his wings. So I'm happy with that. I'm actually going to put a piece of tape here. I'm going to end this picture at the bottom a little bit higher than I've got the bottom of the paper. Um, so I'm just going to stick it to my leg first so when I pull it off the paper, it doesn't tear the paper. And I'm just going to tape there because I want the picture to end there. Okay. So now we're going to start with the bird, the exciting bit. So I'm going to clean my palettes. Give them a wipe. I've always got my handy dandy cloth here, kitchen cloth, Ta -da, that one. So any old kitchen cloth will do. So I give my palettes a wipe. Everyone says don't clean your palette, just use what's on the thing, but it all turns to mud. So I don't like using mud. So I'm going to clean that off. We'll start with nice fresh colours because he's a beautiful bright bird that needs nice fresh colours. 
and I'm going to grab my favourite watercolour brush and we're going to start with the beak. So my favourite brush is a size 8 silver black velvet. It would be quite a trip for me to attend in person. It would be awesome fun, Madonna. Oh my goodness, it would be awesome fun. Because we would all be talking animals and art constantly. Because he does all mediums too. He does watercolour, oil, uh, gouache. He special, like he does his sketches in gouache. Um, pencil, all medium. He works in all mediums. And that I love too. Because so many people stick to one medium. And I'm an all bit of an all mediums kind of gal. Um, but yeah, we would have lots of fun. And then we'd have lots of coffee afterwards. Lots and lots of coffee afterwards. So now his beak is a very pale grey. So for that grey, I'm actually going to mix up a burnt umber, if I can get some to lift off my palette, burnt umber and cobalt blue and dilute that a lot. And that will become a very wishy-washy. I'll put that there so you can see. So burnt umber, where are we? Burnt umber, cobalt blue and a tonne of water makes that a very pale grey. I'm also going to add a little touch, just a teeny touch of gold ochre. You won't even notice it barely. I'll know it's there, but that's all I need. And see how watery that is? And I'm just going to wash that onto his beak. So it basically, it almost just changes, just tints the paper a, to a tone. It's just enough to take the white, the shine of the white off the paper for the very first layer on the beak. Like that. I wanted a very pale grey. Why is my camera zooming? Camera stop zooming. Okay. <laughs> Thought I had it on, on manual, but anyway. Okay, so I've just made that grey, that very pale grey, for the lightest part of his beak. While it's still wet, I'm going to go in with a teeny tiny touch, a teeny tiny touch of Indian red, just around here. He does have a little bit of a tint of red on his beak, or a tint of pink, but I don't own a pink. So pop that onto there, and also around his nostril, a little tint of that Indian red around his nostril. And you can see that just enhances that colour, just changes the colour on his beak a tad. Uh, eventually I will put a stronger grey line in the middle, because he does have... Um, quite a strong beak separation line so where his top beak meets his bottom beak so I'll mark that in but for now I'm going to let that dry for a little bit and I think I'm going to make his head cerulean blue I'm sure I sprayed my watercolours why aren't they damp? hang on I'm going to spray them again I've got a squirty bottle this old squirty bottle that I use to um, wet my paints before I start and I thought I did it but maybe I didn't anyway that's okay so I'm going to go cerulean blue Pop that on the palette, right there. Get me cerulean blue happening. Get plenty of it, actually, because I need it to... So I'm using Schminky and Sennelia watercolours today, too. So I get Sennelia... I uh, get my water well thing filled with that blue, and that should be enough to do the first layer of his head and neck. And it's very diluted, because I want the first layer to be very pale. And now I'm going to take that around his head. I've got to cut around that bit there because I've he's got a marking that goes there. Anywhere that's going to be darker it doesn't matter if I go over the lines at all because dark you can go over it darker. You just can't go back to lighter. So I always start very very pale and build up. So I, and there's green on here but I can actually go over the blue with a green that will be fine. It's a bit of beautiful turquoisey colour there. Now this actually comes right up like that. All right. And now I could have done this. I could have wet the paper first and just dropped it in, but I tend to t I tend to work wet on wet water, watery paint on dry paper. And this is hot press paper, so it's smooth. There's no grain because I prefer to work next to no grain or no grain on my paper. I like smooth because I'm a drawer first and foremost. It's my my passion is drawing. Painting's a luxury, and it's a fun thing to do, but I love drawing. So, drawing's my absolute favourite thing on earth to do. So, I come down here. So that's the very, very, very first layer. 
of his head and neck. Now, his body actually has got these feathery bits are brown. Surprisingly, for a magnificent bird, I need to zoom in a little bit. I'm just going to zoom in on his picture a little bit. It's a browny grey. Actually, it's more like a lavendery grey. Okay, so have I got anything that's even remotely a lavendery grey? What I might try, I might try a bit of neutral tint, which is a brown or an earthy sort of a neutral colour. And I might try a little bit of purple with it. We'll see what happens. A touch of purple. Ooh, that's way too much purple, but that's okay. It's a strong colour, eh? So I'll just and I'll add a ton of water down there. Well, that's okay. That works. That looks like it. That looks sort of like it. A brownie tone. I'll just pop that. Yep, that works. That's a brownie, mauvey, purpley sort of colour. So I'm just going to pop that on all of the little bits that have that line around them that I'd done roughly, the little oval sort of feathery bits. It's like the tips of the feathers, so I pop all of those on. <coughs> and this is fun, because this will take about four or five layers, I reckon, to do this guy, because he goes all the way from this very light colour to an extremely vibrant, almost ultramarine. So it's fun trying to mix up the colours and make the colours to match. It's half the fun of watercolour. You can get lots of ready-made colours, but I still mix a lot. I have all the colours on the rainbow because I love all the colours, <laughs> but I still tend to mix my own because um, I'd, I'd like to just have all the colours just in case because <laughs> I'm hopeless and I'm a collector of all things watercolour, as you do. Um, so I take that right round here and I fill in all of these. doesn't matter, they're sort of random shapes, they're feather ends of feathers. So. It doesn't matter if they're exact and I don't exactly go in the same spots that I've drawn. It's a little bit, you can be a little bit free with watercolour. Watercolour you suggest a lot. You don't um, need to be absolutely, you can be absolutely precise, but you don't need to. Um, having said that, I am trying to get more detail. So we're getting there. <laughs> we're getting there, work in progress I am. So now around all the edges is very dark. All this is a light bluey light sort of colour. So I will add that. I'm going to grab a little bit of, see this is a darker, like a, this is an Indian red colour. And I'm also going to add that in while this is still damp. Pop a little bit of that down in here. All right, I'm going to leave that just around that front bit. I wanted this, that front bit a little bit stronger. But I can build that up in layers anyway, as I go, because the back's sort of sunlit. Okay, so I'm going to let all that dry for a minute, and I'm going to go back to his eye, because this is all still a little bit damp. And for his eye, I'm going to make up my own dark, so I'm going to just get that grey out of there. And I'm going to go burn umber, same mixture, cobalt blue, just less water. Makes up a lovely natural grey. Burn umber, or if you want an even darker one, which I might actually add it even darker, go indigo. Indigo. And burnt umber makes a natural dark grey, almost black. So, and I'm going to use that. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to go because he's actually got a red trim around his eye. So, I'm going to go. What am I going to go? Cap at Morton on the outside of his eye. I'm going to leave a little gap because you can see his iris, and around the outside of his eye is brown. So I'm just going to pop that in first and remembering to leave that highlight, that little tiny strip of white there. And in here I'll do the black or the dark grey that I've made, but now I've got to let that brown dry. And we are going to start another layer of cerulean blue. Whoops, and I've got brown on my brush, that's no good. Clean your brush. It's my favourite brush, so I tend to use it for all the colours. I just clean it between washes. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my cerulean blue. Go back to my cerulean, like that. Get more pigment, less water. More pigment, less water. And I'm going to go back in here. And take that anywhere that's going to be a stronger tone. 
is actually even much, much darker in here, but I'm going to do this layer first. Um, goes over his eye and to the back of his eye. Comes down around the bottom like that. He's very dark under here, so I'll go a layer of this over that. There's a little touch of green, beautiful green coming down there. And then it goes to the back of his head like that. And follow the directions. Remember to follow the directions of the feathers as well. That's a, that's a go the, always go the directions that the, the feathers travel. It helps. These feathers are quite short at the top and they get more dense at the bottom. All right. And he's also got this on the tops of his feathery bits. So I'll pop those in like that. Pop those in like that. There we go. I'll just let that sit for a minute. Come down onto this part of his neck. And it's a little bit thinner down here. You can see I've made it a little bit less strong. And I'll take that all the way down. There we go. All right. He's quite light along there, but I will still add another layer there. And I can blend out those lines. I don't want it to be quite such hard lines. All right. And he's got a skin tony colour in there. His eye's dry now, so I can go back in. Well, it's not quite dry, but it's close to it. So I can pop that dark in there. And I'll fill that in properly in a minute. Um, well, me too. I like mixing, but still just like to open a set and enjoy the colours. Exactly. I have them all. I'll never use them all, but I have them all because they're fun. <laughs> exactly. I appreciate all the colours. And I'm a bit of a collector. I've got lots and lots of sets. So you can see I've just darkened up that line there. Now I'm going to go... See, I can use all the fun colours with this bird. I could probably go a bit of turquoise green because I'm just going to pop that up here on top of this blue so you can see it. Turquoise, oh, look at that. Oh, that colour because he's got that around the back of his neck here. So I can pop a bit of turquoise on the back of his neck. And I'm going to try and get a face cam too, guys, because my face cam's dead. So <laughs> it, it freezes and you end up with my expression just looking at you weird. So, cause, so I've got to get a new face cam, a new webcam. Um, so, yeah, it's not compatible with my new camera, apparently. So I'm going to pop this turquoise around the back here. And start to get some of these fun sort of colours. I'm going to turn, I've got, my, I've got him up on my iPad the pictures up on my iPad and I got the picture off Unspatch I'll show you or the pictures the one that I've got on my um oh, what do you call it on my thumbnail but this is the picture I'm working from so you can see that's the picture I'm working from so far so good <laughs> so and he's got this greeny turquoise which I can go over the top of this blue just here he's got that just there and I can also use a little bit of gouache if I need to I can go back in, add a little bit of gouache later, just if I want any quite any stronger bits. Okay, now under here, he is really strong coloured, so I'm going to go ultramarine. Stick that in the top of me doodah there. Go in me ultramarine, because he's very dark underneath. And that's all still a little bit damp, so I'm using all the blues. Come down here. And it sort of tapers up. Leave little soft edges. I want soft, 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 soft edges. It's dark down there. And you can see he's starting to get a little bit of a three-dimensional feel to him. He's got ultramarine up here on the top of his eye. Gorgeous. Thank you. It is lots of fun. It is lots of fun. And he's got a darker bit here. I, this is what I love about watercolours is the layering. Working, always remembering work, light to dark. But if you make a mistake, you can always add a little touch of acrylic over the top. You can always add a little bit of gouache. You know, if you want to change anything that to make it lighter, you can always use a little bit of water, a bit, bit of gouache 
or a bit of acrylic or you know any water medium you can add over if you want to change anything which I have done I have done that to pieces if I've thought they've needed a bit of extra zing or woof I have done that so and he's actually got that ultramarine coming up under the bottom of his beak there just like that just like that okay and I've got the ultramarine coming down here I'm just having a look at the back of his neck he does have a little bit of it in amongst all of this beautiful greeny blue so I'll pop dots I'm not going to brush it in like flat big brush strokes I'm just going to dot down the back of his neck like that and I'll strengthen up this color at the back of his neck in a minute now he's more ultramarine coming oh gosh that's this magnificent color really like I'm looking at that going I don't even own a color that's that color but I'm gonna we'll, get, we'll just see what we can do so he's got lovely strong blue strokes of blue feathers coming down here on the back of his neck and do them in feathery strokes too it just helps it all helps to oh and he's got gorgeous green teal feathers on the back wow okay I didn't see those before see learning to look you learn to see to look and see more so the more you look the more details you can see and I had one of one years ago one of my old art instructors when I was doing landscapes and things she's like Jen just look at the trees look at look around you and nothing trees aren't green and brown look at every look at the colors and I'm like oh, there's so many colors in leaves if you stop for a minute and just really look at the colors in things you see all kinds of purples and pinks and oranges and all kinds of fun stuff and then you learn to incorporate that into your paintings as well it's so fun so much fun now I'm leaving gaps I'm um, but yeah next time you're outside have a look at leaves and look at all the different tones in them you know especially when the Sun hits them oh golly gosh it's gorgeous you know it's, it's you can spend hours just looking at things <laughs> and like looking at rocks rocks have pinks and grays and blues and oh, even the simplest thing is just full of color and life if you look close enough Oh, it's amazing it's fascinating nature has amazing colors so I see how I've left that line bejaggedy I haven't done it completely flat because he doesn't have completely flat feathers he doesn't have hard lines now let's have a look let's have a look I've got to do I'm going to go another layer of cerulean on the back of his head so I'm going to get me cerulean back here clean me brush get me cerulean back there and I'm gonna and it's more it's, oh, I went in I dipped into the wrong one that's okay I'll clean me brush again I've got to strengthen up the back here with that cerulean and I might even add a little bit of that turquoise in there and he's got little if you look at the photo on the on the thumbnail he's got little dot feathers like little pin feathers on his head so I'm just going to suggest those and I could give him more contrast by doing a background if I choose I could do a background and something um, a what do they call them it's got a name um, I've got my color wheel hang on a complementary color because I use a color wheel too these are very handy so especially if you're doing a painting like this and you think oh do, do I need a background don't I need a background well you get a color wheel like this and it tells you so if I want to use a complementary is opposite on the wheel so whatever so if I'm using that sort of a blue blue green blue teal the background would suit him best being a red orange or an orange so you go opposite on the wheel is your complementaries um, very very handy I always have one of these sitting around I've actually got several in different places so they're they're all over the place because <laughs> I have I have pens and I have watercolors I have car in my car in my handbag got them everywhere so now on his face he has got um, he has got a little bit of a lighter goldy color on his cheek it's sort of a greeny color but I'm gonna go gold just because I can so I've got this gorgeous I love this color <laughs> it's a uh, gold ochre and it's just beautiful and it's a Sennelia color I think 
I've got I'm using Schminky and Sonelli. I've got my both pans out. So I'm going to pop this gold ochre in this little part on his face. Nature is amazing. The colours in nature are mind blowing. Like we've got, they're called snow gum. And when they get rained on, they're white. The trees are white. But when they get rained on, they're red, pink, green, turquoise. They've got all the beautiful colours. Magnificent trees. One of my favourite trees ever. I'm actually sitting looking at one out my window as we speak. And they are glorious. But yeah, when they're wet, they shine every different colour of the rainbow. They're just magical. So now I'm going to use this brownie grey also in his... And our gum leaves. I love gum leaves. The eucalypt, the eucalyptus leaves. Oh, they're blues and greys and greens and all of the things. <laughs> I get excited over colours. I've got problems. I'm sorry, guys. I get on rants. It's like, oh my god, have you seen the colour of that? Well, even yesterday I was loading. We we had the the, the we've got a pot belly stove that we cook on outside in summer. So it's a closed stove, but it's a wood fire stove. So um, we lit the stove and. I'm looking at the wood and I'm like, oh, that's really pretty colours. Like I'm walking to the wood stove with wood to burn, looking at the pretty colours. <laughs> Going, oh, that's got lots of colours. Uh, yeah, I have issues. <laughs> I never stop. My brain never stops arting. Okay, so now I'm going to just add a few little lines in with using the colour that's on my palette. And I love this palette too because it's got beautiful big wells in it. It's got little wells and big wells. I tend to use the big wells. So, and I'm going to use that goldy colour, that gold ochre on these bits that are holding up his display on his head. Just a teeny tiny little bit of it. A teeny itty bitty 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 tiny little bit like that. But I love these silver black velvet brushes too. Because I can use this one brush for pretty much this whole painting. And what size is this paper? Hang on, I'll tell you what size this paper is. Where's my book? Where'd I stick my book? Oh my god. Hang on, that was so five seconds ago. Where'd it go? Oh, I don't know what I've done with it. Go me. Oh, there it is. Hang on, found it. So, these are... This paper is 185 GSM. 90 pound. What size is it? Oh, uh... Five inches by, or well, nearly six inches by eight inches. So it's not not a very big painting, but that's fine because I, I like to work small. I don't like to, I don't work on big landscapes and things. So now I'm going to add. I tend to be more of portraits. I'm going to add this gold in behind, not all over, just in behind some of his back feathers. Get in there, some of his back feathers. Not all over though. Uh, okay, I'm having a quick look. He's got a couple down this way. I can see a few little ready gold bits up there. Okay, and then here. Alrighty, and I'm going to go my. I'm going to make that dark grey again, except this time much less water. It's going to be almost pure pigment. So burn umber, and I'll go indigo to make almost black. Burnt umber and indigo. A bit more indigo. A touch more indigo. You can see that's getting darker. A little touch more indigo. There we go. So it's a very, it's almost a blue black. So you don't have to buy black. You can mix your own. And mixed blacks, the ones you make yourself, look way more natural. Because they've got that little bit of life in them. It's not just a flat colour. And there's his pupil. I was having a quick look. His pupil does take up a bit more of his eye, so I need to maybe take his pupil a bit further like that. There we go. That looks a bit better. That looks a bit better. And I'm going to pop a bit of that same dark grey down that part of his beak. Not the whole length. Not the whole length. And a little bit of that grey down here under his chin. Because he's got very dark. Actually, I can use the indigo. I'm going to use the indigo. I'm going to add way more indigo to that. Way more indigo. You can see that made it even darker. 
because he does have under here almost an indigo chin. And the beauty of this is that your dark, the stronger your shadows, the more three dimensional your picture will look. The more lights and darks, proper lights and darks you have, the more contrast, it just makes things look way more alive. I'm still learning that too. I did a horse yesterday and I didn't have anywhere near enough contrast. I was still really happy with it, but I needed more contrast. When I looked at it later, I'm like, I could have gone darker with the darks. Whenever you think you've gone dark enough, go darker because you need to, you know, what you think, and watercolour fades back. So you need to go darker than you actually think you, do, think you are. Okay, so this is indigo mixed with that grey, but it's majority indigo now. It's less, less grey than indigo. I'm going to take that right down, and I can use that as a shadow colour in his shadow area. So he's all shadow down here. So get the indigo again, get more, oh, look at that. That's gorgeous. That is absolutely beautiful colour. And I'm going to, colours are exciting. Come up here, there's a little bit of indigo there. And he's also got this indigo right at the base of his feathery bits, like that. Okay, come down the back here. And that connects into his back. And there's a very dark shadow where his wing sits around here. Now I'm going to make this all this white here, I'm going to turn into a very pale blue, I think. I'm undecided, but I think I'm going to turn him into a pale grey. So I'm going to clean my brush. And I've actually got to add a teeny little bit of green. And I'm going to go a tiny bit of Iridian. A little bit of Iridian up into here. Because he does have a little bit of a green. And I've got my Viridian green. You can barely even see that into his fe head feathers there as well. Around his eyes, what colours around his eyes? There's a grey. He actually has a solid grey and a blue around his eyes. So I will mix a little bit more burnt umber. I'll clean that orange out. Get a bit of burnt umber. A bit of blue. Make that a grey brown. This is one of my favourite mixes, this burnt, burnt umber and grey blue. And I'm just going to do little dots around his eyes. I'm not going to do a solid line of grey. I still want little sparkles of light coming through. So I just do that. He's got a shadow underneath, which I'll do when that dries a little bit. And, and I'm going to add a tiny little line of turquoise. Oh, I've got a hairy. One of my brushy do does. I've got a tiny little line of turquoise behind that gold, that gold ochre that I put there. I just want a little little zip of colour popping up onto those onto his head piece, onto his crest. There we go. All right, let's have a look now. I am going to add, I'm just looking at his wing feathers now, they're, they're pretty much white but he's got a beautiful teal on his back, so I'm going to add this turquoise onto his back, as you can see that coming up over the top of his wing. I can actually add that into this bit a little bit, I think, like that. And I can bring it up over the top of the lighter colours, it'll show through still, because there's still a little bit of light there. So I'll grab a bit more turquoise, a little bit more turquoise, and take that onto the ceruleans. I might pop a bit there and wash that down, and that'll just that'll still fade back. I'm just putting it on the lighter areas where the cerulean was, and taking that down because the cerulean dried back sort of a quite a greyish blue. Okay, so there we go. Because colours do have a little bit of um, shift when they dry. They never quite look as good as they do when they're wet. So now I'm going to also go, all this is dry. I'm going to get the turquoise. Quite watered down. Come over this between those dots. I can always start strengthen up those dotty bits again. 
All right. Cool, cool. Getting there. I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do with these wings because I'm going to add more detail. I'm going to actually get my fine brush. Where's my fine brush? I've got this amazing little fine brush. It's gorgeous. It's a rigger. And I am now going to use, I think I'm going to go completely rogue and use a bit of crimson. A little bit of crimson because why not? I don't know whether you can see that. I've got a bit of crimson here. It's almost that colour I mixed down there, which is the, um, what did I use there? Caput Mortem and, I can't remember now. Anyway, so I'm going to mark in little feathery lines. I can use that colour, that'll do. The colour that I mixed. And I'm going to add little feather lines, just so they're not just blobs. Not on all of them, just around. Not every single one, just enough that it draws your eye to the detail but you won't even notice the ones that don't have detail. You don't want it on every one because it'll look flat. It'll all look in the same. You've got to vary your, your details. Do you seal your paintings with anything? I don't with watercolours. Um, I frame them under glass and yeah that's all. I don't seal them. Uh, uh, gouache I don't because gouache can crack and it needs to breathe and move. Oh, the only thing I probably seals, um, seal are my acrylics. Um, I seal them. I've got an acrylic uh, semi-gloss varnish that I just spray. But I've never sealed a watercolour. I just frame them. And under, but when I frame them, I put them under UV glass so that they don't get sun damage. So if you go to a good framer, you can get UV resistant glass. And I use archival, so it's, it's museum quality for the good stuff. Otherwise, it just lives in its books or it lives, it goes into a folder and sits in a folder and it's protected in the dark. Um, but yeah, if I frame it, it's archival quality and UV resistant glass. You can get all kinds of sealers, but I just, I haven't, I just haven't. So I wouldn't know what to recommend, but I'm sure if you go to your local art place, they'll have advice on what to use. Or even get onto one of the forums. Um, like I'm in all kinds of watercolour groups online. So, and you talk about everything. So you can find someone that you respect and ask them what they use. Because um, there's a there's some great books. I'm in all the Australian groups. Um, watercolour groups like uh, Australian artist, Australian watercolourist, wildlife art, nature artists, all that sort of stuff. And you can get heaps of advice. It's fantastic. So now I'm just going to take these feathers down here because I didn't, and I'm not even doing them as feathers, I'm just doing the lines suggesting the feathers coming down here. And I love these little brushes and you can get these at the $2 shop. These was, this was like $5 for five brushes. So all different varying sizes of rigor. Thank you, I have mine in a folder also. Yeah, the, my normal ones live in folders. I have like school folders and that's it. That's where they all live in there. And they keep fine. I've had some, I pulled out some, uh, I was doing like a portfolio and I went back through my old work and yeah, they're still in perfect condition and they're kept flat in the, in the you know, the loose leaf pages, you know, the plastic dividery things. Hello, Nettie. Thank you. How are you, Doug? Um, yeah, so I keep them in the loose leaf folders and the plastic and just have them all stacked up. And yeah, it keeps them perfectly. Okay, so now I'm going to add a little bit, a tiny little bit of very diluted. I'll just add water to this. Say so super duper 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 diluted. I'm going to add a little tint of blue between some of these feathers because there's just too much white. There's just too much white going on. I've just got to break that white up a little bit with some, and that'll dry back to almost just a tiny little tint on the paper. It won't be very strong at all. It'll be a teeny tiny tint on the paper. Everyone does things a bit differently in the groups. I learn all the time. Yeah, God, you can pick you can pick something up off everyone. You know, there's always something to learn. Always something to learn. But yeah, it's good fun.
Okay. So I come down here. And I love looking at people's artwork too. I can sit there, like if I go to a museum, I'll sit, sit in one spot for about two and a half hours just looking at one painting. We had a royal exhibition, so all of the portraits that hung on the, the castle's walls came over because over here we don't get that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, they're life-size oil paintings. And I sat there for an hour and a half looking at one picture, just like looking at all the brush strokes and trying to pick what colours they'd used and how they did the jewels, like their jewellery and the velvet and the detail was insane. And then their little dogs on the floor. I was like, oh, my God, they've got little dogs on the floor. But, yeah, it was good fun. <laughs> Needless to say, I'm my poor husband. He doesn't. My husband never goes to galleries with me because I just, I just, I'm one of those. I sit down and look at stuff. <laughs> I sit down and spend hours just breaking things down and enjoying every every stroke on the brush stroke. So I'm going to go with this indigo again, and I'm going to start to get into really dark darks. Just to, not not with my big brush though, not in big swathing brush strokes. I'm just going to do little dark super dark details coming down here you can add little brush strokes like that I'm having a look his face I still haven't got his face dark enough so I'm going to take some of this with my fine brush up here and it's just now now I'm getting into the detail so it's actually getting towards the end of the piece and how long's it been 46 minutes because, I mean, watercolours sort of suggested anyway. It's not um, intricate detail. I wish I could do that. But, okay, I'm going to go darker under here, under his dots. And indigo is a brilliant, 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 brilliant dark colour. Like, oh, it's gorgeous. I own, I own a black, but I don't use it. I very, very, very rarely use it. Because nothing in nature is pure black. It's always got blues in it. Nature doesn't do black, but it does a lot of indigo. And you can also, yeah, like I said, you can make, with a blue and a brown, you can make an almost black. And you can use pretty much any blue and any brown. Oh, no, you can't. You can use any burn umber and most blues will make a good dark grey. Okay, so I'm also going to add, he's darker along here. So I'm going to add some darker strokes, not in a solid line. Ah! Blobbed. <laughs> it's okay. If you get it quick, it just lifts straight off. Um, oh, and that's way too much water on that brush. So I'm going to pick that up. You wouldn't think this brush would hold that much water, would you? But anyway. So, whoa, look at that. I, I, every, time I, every time I dip into my indigo, it's like, whoa. It's a world of darkness and it's wonderful. <laughs> just such a gutsy colour indigo. It's my, I think it's indigo is my favourite. Indigo and transparent sienna are my favourite colours on earth, I think. They're just glorious. So now I'm going to come down here. I think transparent sienna is a schminky colour. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's a schminky. Because my two favourite palettes are schminky and sennelia. And I have them both out all the time. Okay, so I'm going to come down the back a bit more. And I've got to get some more into the middle, onto that dark bit there. Just going the directions of the feathers with the fine tip of my rigger. And like I said, this is a dollar, a dollar brush that I use for the rigging, for the fine stuff. I don't have to do this, but I'm, I'd like to... I'm trying to get a bit more detail happening. And I'm going to add some darker dots to contrast against the lighter bits on the top of his head like that and also coming I'm just having a quick look I've got the dark there he's got dark here he's got darker here like that all right now I'm going to go back have a look at my palette I've lost the color chart off my one palette so I'm sort of looking at the colors going is that or isn't that oh that's a pretty one okay that's like my turquoise that's gorgeous. Okay, you can see that. Bring that closer there. And I'm going to go in. So it's just a slightly stronger turquoise. So less water, more pigment. I'm going to add that in there a little bit. A little bit more around here. Like that. 
so just a bit more intense and I'm going to take that with this rigger brush not solidly over the whole lot I'm just going to put it in little sections get a bit more on my brush on my palette come down here and it's fun you know I'm, I'm still learning I still learn every day I do something and go oh that worked and yeah it's fun it's fun trying different things be a bit brave if it goes wrong oh well you get to do it all again don't you that's what I think if you make a mistake you get to do it again and it's even better and sometimes I've had some great artworks come out of really icky accidents I've gone back and gone okay well what went wrong and then I've gone back and changed something and had really amazing achievements with pieces I'm actually going to add I'm going to clean my brush and I'm going to go back into the gold yeah, as long as you're willing to have a go abstract hello Anjali abstract art absolutely absolutely thank you very much thank you Dal. how are you today so I'm going to darken up strengthen up the color on his beak just on the tip of his beak I don't want it all the way I don't want his beak to look flat in one color so I've got a very pale gray I've got indigo indigo and now I've got a bit of gold gold ochre when I say gold it's gold ochre so it's an earth color an earthy color because ochres are a reddy brown all right so that's that and I'm also and I've also got that's that gold ochre dry down here so it dries to a nice natural sort of color I've left the white of the highlight of the eye the white do I need a background peeps what do we think I don't think I will I think I'm gonna leave him like he is I am gonna go a bit of cobalt blue get a bit of cobalt blue on my palette and add some more detail onto these strands in his headdress his, his crest I can use a mixture of all the blues on my palette that's fine there we go just fluffs those out a little bit and he is just about done guys like he's really not that far off done I'm gonna go a bit more of that indigo I could try a bit of indanthrone <gasps> let's do that oh dioxazine actually you know what we're gonna go dioxazine purple I don't use that color anywhere near it look at that look at that for a deep gutsy purple it is absolutely gobsmacking gorgeous so I'm gonna pop the dioxazine in a few spots because one can never have too many beautiful colors so yeah because I can <laughs> so I'm going to use this dioxazine and it's like my camera doesn't do it justice looking at it in real life under light it shines a beautiful glossy I mean it's watercolor but it's a, just a strong color a gorgeous gorgeous strong color so if you did put a sealer over it like a, a, a varnish it could like you could really make a watercolor shine like it would be magical it would be magical I've never done it on oh, it see see Madonna I'm learning <laughs> I might have to give it a try I might have to seal one but with a gloss sealer and see what happens because I've never done it and it might make a difference it might hold some luster in the colors he's gorgeous Jen thank you thank you lots of fun I've got to darken up under his or just under here and a little bit under there just the teeniest and a little line that comes to the back there so you're just starting to add the real fine details now like the very last bits now is the fiddlies where you gotta you gotta know when to stop and this is my problem sometimes I stop too early and sometimes I I never seem to stop at the right spot I always look at a piece afterwards and go oh and I'll touch it up I'll say oh I need to add this or I need to take that away or I need to do this and I've just started getting back into acrylics which is just a never-ending world of fun because you can change them indefinitely you can just go rogue with those and look at it three days later and go oh I want to change that so yeah I'm in all kinds of trouble because I've got started doing acrylics again <laughs> my world has just gone psycho artly but yeah I'm doing all new things all different things all at once which is great for Jenny brains okay now I'm also going to take a little bit of this to this purpley indi in 
in Dant Throne onto his wings. Just a little bit on some of these bottom ones that are in shadow, that are in the darkest bit. Just to carry that colour across the whole painting because it helps to unify a piece if you take that but if you use the colour over the whole piece, it really does bring it all together. Because if I had just in a damp throne or just purple up here and nothing down here, it would draw your eye up. I want your eye all around. So I'm adding a little bit of all the colours everywhere. So that you you know, different strengths and different amounts. But just so that it's, it's unified. And it makes harmonious. It makes the picture harmonised. The one the one guy I watched did really thin coats of clear spray, so it wouldn't move the colour. Ooh, that's cool. That is cool. I'll have to have a look. I'll have to see what we've got at my art shop. I have to have a look and see what they've got. All right, I'm just going to darken up. down here just at the bottom of his neck and I reckon you know what he's just about done but I'm gonna actually add because his eyes looking a little bit flat to make it not look flat I'm gonna go a bit of dioxazine into the the black of the pupil not the whole thing but you can see how that lifted that pupil it just made it that tiny little bit darker gave it a little bit more jump a little bit more standy outy so there you go. I'm just having a look at his beak. I rec I don't. I think if I fiddle any more, it's going to be too much. So I'm going to sign this down this bottom left-hand corner, just with a simple initials and date, and we are done. So I hope you've enjoyed this, guys. This was tons of fun. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, Madonna, Angeli, um, everyone who's been here, Nettie. Thank you guys and gals for being here. Um, makes it so much fun. Uh, I'll be back. I'll probably be back over this weekend actually. I'm working this afternoon, but I think I've got the weekend off. So, because I've gone back to work as well. On top of everything else, I've gone back to work. As you do. Because <laughs> I'm a glutton for punishment and I love being busy. So, yes. So, I will see you all for the next video. Or I'll pop into your videos and have a look and say hi and leave a comment. And yeah, so thank you for being here. Have an awesome day and I'll hopefully be back. If you've got any suggestions on what you'd like to see me paint, I'll have a go at pretty much anything. Just pop it in the comments below. If you want to see, if there's anything you'd like to see painted, I do animals. I've just started to get into, what do they call it? Um, uh, street, drawing, drawing street scenes. Um, what do they call that? Oh my God, I've gone completely blank on what that is called drawing buildings oh my god there's a name for it anyway i've got into that now as well as you do try a bit of everything so if you've got anything i do i do airplanes i do boats i do seascapes i don't do many landscapes i suck at landscapes that's something i need to practice in isn't it so that you need to do what you're not good at doing so i always tend to push myself because i never used to be good at birds and practicing them pretty much every day for a year i've got better at birds so um yes if there's any suggestions pop it in the chat below in the comments and I'll see it and I'll definitely have a go, I'm sure, at some point. The horse I did yesterday was a suggestion from, from a follower. So anyway, thank you so much. You have a great day. Oh, Nettie, it's great that I caught you. It's great to have you here, Dale. It's always wonderful to catch up with my buddies. So have a wonderful day, everyone. And I will see you. For, oh, it's, see, it's probably night time there, isn't it? It's morning here. I will see you for the next video. I'll, probably, I'll try and live stream a lot more. I've been making lots of videos, but I've been setting up my new camera. Because I've got a new camera and I've got new headphones, so I can I can actually do a better a better quality job. So hopefully I'll do a lot more streaming. So yes. So take care everyone. Have a great day, and I'm off like a frog in a sock. I'll see you next time. <laughs> take care, guys.